Yep, it's finally time to talk about it. Hello everyone, this is Floxcat, and welcome to another video game review, and actually kind of one that I kind of jokingly wanted to do for a lot while, while, and still shocked that I'm even able to because how rare this game is. Of course, being a sequel to, or kind of, actually, it's a sequel video to another video I did, but it's also the game itself is actually a prequel to the first review I did. You understand if you look down below, I'll send a link down in the description down below of the review I did previously of the Transform. But today we'll be finally talking about the whole Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing. A racing game that I highly respect and possibly one of the best um, Mario Kart ripoffs, depending on the person. Like I generally have a lot of, a lot of love for this game, mostly because this is another one of my childhood games along with Skylanders and Pokemon Y. But, you know, it's pretty much interesting to say the least. And after finally playing it, I have, will be able to review it again. Like, I'm glad. Like, I've been literally, after this video, I'm literally am going to play this game, <laughs> to be honest. But, of course, to recap for those who do not recall, this game came out around 2010 or 2012, if I remember correctly. And it came out during the, the time of the Wii, which is pretty much one of the biggest biggest selling points for Nintendo until they made Wii U and crashed down, let's be real here. In fact, the only person who ever still plays his Wii U is me, because I still love the Wii U, even though I will admit it's, it bombed. Like, you can't even deny it. However, of course, because of this, this does leave into the question. How did Sonic All-Star Racing work before? And like I said in a previous video, why do I think Sonic Transform was somewhat of an improvement, but yet the original is still great? Because I think I remember saying that, and if I have it, then here it is. Hopefully I don't hypocrite myself because I forgot that review, to be honest, even though I'll still say that the Racing Transform was good, even though it was on the 3DS, and since I might not be able to get Transform for the Wii U for a long time, I'm going to have to wait for that. And I even double down and say that is because I also have the DSi version of Sonic Racing All-Star. That sound jumble, but you know what I mean. I literally do have the DS version of this. Though I will say the Wii, the Wii version is the most much better to play as. But that leaves us to the question: Why is it so good, and why I consider Sonic the first the first Sonic Racing game much more better? And that is mostly because. To be honest, it's m more fair than even Mario Kart. So for those who do not know, uh, like I said, this thing came out around the, the 2000s, mainly 2010s, during, I think, near towards the end of the Wii U cycle, but I could be wrong. And it also, by the way, also came out, well, not the Wii U, the Wii, by the way, need to correct that, but it also came out for the Xbox and PlayStation. Not the first one, but, you know, whatever, during that time. I think it was PlayStation 3, and that one would have been the Xbox One. And it's definitely one of the more interesting racing games, because, like I said, unlike Mario Kart, this game is definitely fair with its racing. It's still a clone to, um, still a clone to Mario Kart, but it's much more better in every form. And note, I will be reviewing the... Wii version, because I consider the Wii version the best version because it's the only version I played other than the DS version, and DS version, it's fine, but it also kind of sucks, to be honest. 
mostly because of the downgrade, but it's still fine. Though this does lead to the question, question, is this, this game pretty good? It is, and it does have a lot of very interesting characters to say the least, a lot of said classics, and it's pretty much your standard uh, racing game, to be honest. Like, literally, the main point of the game is go to point to do laps around. And unlike Racing Transform, it's basically just the same wrap around. Like, there's no changes to the maps and stuff. There will be hazards, of course, and you have to dodge them. And really, it's just basically the same game of Mario Kart, like, up to the point of Mario Kart Wii, to be honest, which makes sense as this game was supposed to be a rival towards that, to the point where, at one point, they were actually going, like, this is a trivia that I didn't even know, but at one point, they literally wanted the, literally wanted the, um, Mario to be in this game, but they decide not to. This is actually a thing, that is very honest. But of course, let's go ahead and clearly talk about it. And the first things first is how the game controls. Uh, to be honest, there's two ways it control. The first one is one that I do need to let you guys know, and it's probably also probably going to be the one that really make or break game people if they're using the Wii. It is isn't even just a freaking Sonic All-Star Racing thing. Let me just show you. The way it's supposed to work in most of the kart games during this time of the Wii's life cycle is supposed to be this. Literally, you gotta turn your thing sideways, you're supposed to steer like this and stuff, and it's definitely interesting to say the least. Now, why do I say interesting at least? Because I recommend you guys just grab this if you're able to. Like, literally grab this. Not even just for this game, but any other racing game that requires it. Like, let me, let me, like it's much more better, to say the least. The reason why I say that is mostly because, to be completely honest with you, literally it's better to either A, use that controller I use, which I do use for this, or B, this could work too. The nug shot. Why? Because the freaking Wii remote. Like, I have to probably do a separate review video of just how bad some of the Wii concept was. Like, the Wii is fine. Like, I'm never gonna. Everyone loves the Wii. I love the Wii. We all love the Wii. However, the Wii remote and its motion controls. Let's just say it's terrible. Like, some of the motion control games are terrible and stuff. And it's. And it's kind of sad because the whole point of it, like, there was the, what was it called? The, 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 the Wii, uh, steering wheel? That thing would have worked, but it just sucked. And it was just better to just grab these and stuff, like, literally, for a cart game and stuff. Like, seriously, do you see people, you playing Mario Kart 8 with, with a stick or using the these or very uh, using this since generally speaking it was they came out with Wii U first and then they later changed the switch. But overall, that's the only kind of make or break situation with the game, and not even just uh, All Star Racing, but definitely also other kart games, even Mario Kart Wii. But really, Mario Kart or Sonic All-Star Racing is definitely much more balanced than Mario Kart. And note that I have played Mario Kart Wii before. I don't have the game now, but I played it before alongside it. And it's pretty clear which one I will go most for. I did admit, I will admit I enjoyed the Mario Kart Wii, but I enjoyed this one better for multiple reasons. The first one, which I think I also talked about in my previous review was the fact that this game really isn't floaty. It really is. Like, it will gain some airtime, but it's much more control on the ground. It's not more light as, like, the Mario Kart is. Like, it's more controlled to the ground, which is pretty good, to say the least. Uh, the second one is the items. 
and like I said in the previous video, the they changed it from racing transformed and stuff like that. And racing transform, it's okay. It's much more decently balanced, I guess. But this one is definitely this game definitely brings into a lot of abilities with balancing with the game. Like for example, what they used to have the rockets and the punching gloves, which is technically the rip off of the blue and I meant the red and and green shells from Mario. And even then that's not all. They also have like the cones, which is basically the bananas, but it doesn't really get slide. They also have two other interesting weapons. They have the rainbow, which will block your view for a while with colors, and and the star, which turns you fucking upside down. I am not joking. Then they had the the blue rocket, which is essentially the much more better version of the blue shell, just much more strategized, has much more control. And then I'm trying to think. And then finally, they have something called the all stars, which if you're way behind. Technically, you can press that, and it really is a game changer. Like, every single character has a different all-star. And speaking of Wick... Okay, this is going to look weird, but, you know, I'm trying my hardest to show this to y'all. But they also got different characters and stuff. And really good stuff. Like, to be honest, I consider this game better with its all-star cast than, um... All Star Racing Transform. Like, I get it because some of these characters, like, they still have the classes like Billy Hackchick and Migo and Ulala -la and Beat and, you know, that. And the other characters, but then they get the stuff like the QQs, which is literally the characters I definitely use. The QQs, I love those characters. Uh, whoever these guys are, Bonzon Bros. I was kid, which actually he did pair as a DLC, of course, for the game. And then we get to Oopa Oopa, and of course for the Wii, they have the Miis and stuff. And you know, basically they have a bunch of characters. Also, they have like different stats as usual, which is kind of annoying when it comes to this game. But what you expect? Yep, pretty much that and stuff. Also, they have different modes with this thing, which, of course, there is, first off, is Grand Pix, which is the standard arcade mode, which literally just race for a cup. Single race, which you just, again, do a single race. Got the time tri tri trials, as the usual. And, of course, we have missions, which is definitely more creative, but it's not like the previous mission. It's not like the mission seen in Racing Transform. It literally is just basic stuff. We also have two-player or four-player with split screen. Hopefully you can see that. Wi-Fi stuff, license, and, of course, the shopping, which, of course, unlike the previous, unlike Racing Transform, in the previous, you can actually buy off your tracks and stuff. You don't have, actually have to unlock them or anything. You actually have to buy them, including the characters. But as you may guess, I already um, bought all of them. Also, I should show off the music too. I haven't done that yet, but I'm doing the tracks and characters first before buying off the music because that's just extra. But yeah, literally buy off your characters and stuff. And really, it's very interesting to say the least. Now, as for the design-wise of the game, it's very beautiful, to say the least. It's a little bit more, it's not more motion mole, mole as of Mario Kart, as more lively. But it's definitely beautiful to look at, especially stuff. Uh, could get a little bit glitchy. Uh, surprisingly, there was a glitch that happened when I was racing where I press, had to press a bunch of all-star mode a bunch of times on the freaking casino track but hey it's a Wii game what do you expect it's back then they were a little bit glitchy but overall it's run smoothly pretty good looking and stuff literally a good classic however as you might guess there are a little bit of flaws to it and technically there are actually kind of major flaws to it to be honest 
I mean, it's still a perfect game. However, there's a few things that are very interesting, to say the least. And first off, and the biggest, probably the biggest flaw I could think of is the crack designs. Now, the crack designs, most of them are cool and good. They literally are good. Some are definitely creative. Like, I personally love the, the Jet Set Radio stuff. And, you know, it's very unique. Although, I will say, unlike Racing Transform, which, of course, makes sense since it's a sequel... And they kind of did make up with it because it's a sequel. Eek series, or at least series that they did put in, only gets free cracks. With the section being Sonic itself getting literally nine cracks. So literally, the series that this game represents is Billy Hatchet, uh, Jet Set Radio, Month Super Monkey Ball and the Haunted Mansion, I think that was called. And only literally two of those, if not three, are well known. I mean, I say that because I think many people may remember what Sega's Haunted Mansion is, but who the hell really remembers Billy Hatchick? I mean, that's actually the only time I was introduced to Billy Hatchick was this game. I don't even know what it is. I've seen a little bit of it. And stuff, and I get to it's supposed to be nostalgic, but freaking even Sega All Star Tennis, which I also have, and I'm going to actually probably do a separate review of that game because holy crap, at least makes its way noble by trying to have more representation of every other thing they use, like even Pio Pio Pio. I am not making that up, but yeah, you couldn't like there's. And, again, they did fix this in Racing Transform, which is fine, but, you know, that's kind of, ugh. But, again, the cracks are okay, except for one crack. Oh, boy. Which is this motherfucker right here. This fucker. This fucker right here. I'm putting my middle finger in. Fuck this motherfucker. And the reason why it's pretty simple is gone Dawn hard and actually you can see the simple because you have to ride up here and you really have to drift like this game does points out that you really do need a drift on some of these cracks you have to go backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and the drifts are super hard and as fuck and it's not even funny like literally in fact to be kind of honest the worst cracks in the game has to be the super monkey ball which they definitely re-improved and transformed. And I say that because in the Super Monkey Ball cracks, like when you think of a race crack or literally even cracks in racing games, you think of them have to be not really not be, uh, as I put it, uh, not geometry. What was it? Oh boy, I'm blanking on it. Polygon. Yeah, polygon. It's supposed to be like circumference, like it's supposed to be curvy and stuff, which makes sense. I mean, you still gotta have turns, no doubt, and griffing, which makes sense. And by the way, the griffing on this game is good, at least, and stuff. But you don't need to make your cracks look like your house. Like literally how a hallway looks. And literally, like, so, like you spec a crack be like this, like my hand. Not as like this as like a square. Literally. It's supposed to be, and I get it because it's supposed to be because Super Monkey Ball is literally a Marvel Race game and of course Marvel Race games have squip, polygon square like tracks with it. Not always, but definitely. Like look at freaking Hamster Ball and the other type of Marvel racing games. But bro, that doesn't work with a fucking racing game. I'm glad, like, literally, I'm glad they even changed it in the Racing Transform. Like, they still give uh, Super Monkey Ball a crack, a brand new crack. Holy crap, they improved it. I'm glad that they even brought it back, at least what I know of. They didn't bring it back in the Racing Transform, especially Monkey Target. Whoever created that crack, holy crap. Like, the rest of the cracks are even fine. I mean, some have some weird edits to be honest like i think uh highways highway zero subway zero is a little bit weird with the like 
the rail guarding and stuff. And I don't know, I forgot what which one, but it's in one of the Sonic tracks, like the Eggman tracks. They were supposed to have like this offset, but the only way you can activate it if you speed up. Which is fine, it's great, but there's no boost into it, so you really are just begging the thing. And even then, then you get to the thing in the Ocean View racing, which is another Sonic thing. And it's basically have an overpowered thing that you can go over without a boost. Well, you still need a drift boost, but you can drift into it and boom off. So, yeah, some of the track designs, like, they're definitely okay, very stylized. But I feel like they went for more stylized than kind of working towards it, which is kind of interesting. Like the racing transform, while it also is stylized, they definitely work more better with that. Like even for the 3DS than what they did with the original. But that's my point of view. If you're able to beat Monkey Target, I gotta think, literally question you in, as a person and stuff. And that's just a joke because really I'm not a hard player gamer like many other people to say the least. But it's fine because actually it has a beginning, advanced, and expert mode. So it's fine. And like I said, it's very, it's very, you can literally, it's easy to learn and get on to. Harder to master is probably the best way to put it in a nice way. And it's fine. Like literally, I deeply love this game. Like it's probably, probably the best Mario Kart clone I ever played so far. Because it really is just a full good Mario Park Mario clone. Mario Kart clone, to say honest. Like it has very good characters. That's even outside of Sonic. It really does at least have good tracks, except for the Super Monkey Ball tracks. Like literally, like only two of them are passable as best. But the first one, Monkey Target, this garbage. And you know, it's still good and fun. So, do I recommend if you guys can try to find it? Hell yes. Go good luck because it literally, it was literally ultimate luck that I got last week because it was extremely hard, which even shows just how good, like even the ratings of it, when I look up on Wikipedia of it, was solid and stuff. Not to mention the other versions like, for some reason, Banjo-Kazooie was able to get into the Xbox version. <laughs> like, I feel like Sega and Nintendo missed that one. Like, why not add Sonic to the Wii, like, version? I mean, I mean, Mario to the Wii version. I don't know. They missed that mark a little bit. At least they had the Miis, but eh, I don't say people play that much of the Miis. Like, I don't even do it that much. But anyways, yeah, that's pretty much my view if I had to rate it, and this is going to sound weird, but it really is an A+, plus or an S+, plus. really a high-rating game, which makes sense why it's so hard to find now, because it really is a beautiful game. It really is. So, if I truly had to rate it, it will still be an A, but I think an A-, because there are at least two major flaws. One, I don't think people will... It, it still looks a beautiful Especially during its time, but looking back at it with the color designs, it's similar to that of Skylanders, to be honest. I know that sounds bad, but trust me, it's way more better than Skylanders design, Skylander Giants design. But it's definitely not the best graphically looking game in some cases. Still have good graphics and stuff. And really, it's really good. Though the second problem is some of the crack designs, and really, I think another problem I should point out, even though it's fair, but it's definitely weird, it's kind of similar to Smash Brothers, although apparently right now Smash Brothers definitely fixed it, with especially with Ultimate, being that it's so oversaturated with Sonic characters, like they still have other Sega characters, which is great, but even Racing Transform is oversaturated with Sonic characters, but it's not as bad as the original. That's not a problem, but really, I wish to see, like, it's so saturated that for some reason in the uh, racing portion, you expect to see the other characters as well. Like, you see them in the single race, but for some odd reason, not in the, not in the, um, uh, what do you call it, the Grand Prix. 
or the arcade. So uh, I don't know, but still, it's a, a it's literally one of the best racing Mario Kart clone games I ever played on. I still recommend. I do recommend if you want to go find it, go find it. Like it's worth your time. But good luck because it's it's hard to find. It's hard to find and grab one. But anyways, this is my review of the game. Uh, again, if you want to see the sequel review, I, re I will put it in the description down below. Note that is not the Wii U version, it is the 3DS version. So I'll definitely leave that in the description down below if you want to watch, learn about the sequel of the game. This has been Floxcat. I'm snapping out of here. Bye-bye.